What is up YouTube? Today we'll be doing a review for my Bix 3. So this is a great overall plane, great beginner plane. This is my first plane, so I've experienced soccer from a beginner's standpoint. Um let's see, it's a great glider, glides forever. But um the one downside to it is the motor. I have upgraded to a Turnigy Aero Drive. Let's see if I can get that. Not with the GoPro, but a 2836 1500 kV motor. That will be linked in the description below. So you can pick that up as well if you want to follow in my footsteps. But, um, that you have to get a new motor mount for it. Because otherwise you can't mount it because the stock motor is different size. Um, if you do that, you have to upgrade the ESC. And on the inside, I'll show you that in a second. But to get the wings off, it's just these two little clips that you turn, pull out. I'm in buying an extra pair of those in case you lose them. Otherwise, you can't fly. The wings just slide right off. Wait a second. And I am running. There is my ESC. That is off a striker from one of my friends. He gave me that. And then I have my receiver in there. Lighting's kind of bad. And just to be safe for when I go out a little, di little distance, I'm running a satellite here and a satellite here. I am running an orange receiver and that is an orange satellite down here in the tail but a spectrum satellite works with it. So that works so you can save yourself 20 bucks if you have a spectrum or other satellite. And forgot to talk about the prop, running an 8.4. And I also have a 9x6, but that is too many amps for my ESC, so I have to upgrade soon. So you have to upgrade. And definitely get the APC props. The prop they give you is kind of bad, too. Um, but that's just something to think about. You don't have to do that. That's just recommendation. They're pretty cheap, too. They're like $3, and they last. Because you, it's really hard to break these with the style where it pushes. These don't normally make contact with the ground unless you have a really, really bad landing or laying in a tree like I've done. But even then, it doesn't always mess that up. What you need are these ex servo lead extensions. Otherwise, you cannot reach your servos. Well, you can if you don't put flaps in, but you need flaps because otherwise the little flap I guess the little winglet part will just flap around in the wind and that's not really what it's designed to do. So you either need to pop school stick, tape that, or hot glue or something. Or you can just buy the cheap servos, like this one. And that normally is like two, three dollars. It's worth it. And that's when you need it is on this side. On this side the way it's designed where it it comes around farther and then it ends up being this really really short little stub and that won't be able to read and you can't reset off the receiver at least the way I'm running it so I've got the servo extensions and it's just helpful then it's not everything's not so stressed so the servo so you want to do the um, flaps and then to get the wings to come apart it's just this little tab you lift up and then you can pull apart. And then it's held together by your aluminum spar. And there's a little carbon, little carbon tube that just slides into. And then you slide them together, and they normally click. So that's really nice. Um, it's normally a little bit off balance, so I have some double A's that I have count. It's counterbalance against the weight. When you're just running the canopy, the styrofoam canopy, or EPP, my bad, it tends to be a little um, tail heavy. Just add some weight in the nose. should counter out. Um, that normally happens, but then when you start adding gear, like my FPV gear, which I'm running, is a 250 milliwatt on the plywood tray. Where it just kind of slides in, and then it'll pop some magnets. Um, then it tends to start getting nose heavy, so you have to add some weight to the tail to push it against 
as far back up in here you see that little piece of um get that out of the way there's a little piece of velcro back there where I velcro all my well, counterweights in and then depending on the battery you'll need less weight I'm running the Zippy 2800 from Hobby King that is a 30 C discharge and then a 2200 30 C discharge from E-Flight and these are both three cells and I've just ordered a 4000 milliamp 10 C so we'll have to see how that works out that should be good long flight time so that's what I'm going for at this point um, the landing gears all you have to do for those is push like pull together they slide right out take it and pull like that same thing to go in these are kind of cheap metal they bend so make sure you rebend them if it's a rough crash if you have bigger wheels that's good for when you kind of roll through some grass so the wheels they give you are pretty small I chose not to put the wheel pants on but that is my opinion pretty easy to get back on. Um, the one servo that I would recommend upgrading is, no, oh, yeah, no, oh, that's elevator, my bad, is the one that goes down to the rudder, which is nice because it has the steerable tail wheel down here. That all runs off of one servo, so that servo gets a lot of um, torque on it and stuff when you land. So I would do a 9 gram metal gear that will be in the link in the description below as well as the motor props and batteries I'm running um, so all in all this is a great plane great for beginners I would definitely recommend it it takes quite a beating it's a little little awkward to um, transport sometimes just because of the size but when you take the wings apart it's not actually that bad but I would recommend this. Run. I have the GoPro sitting up here if you couldn't tell already, but that's recording this. But great plane. Re I would recommend. Any questions, leave them in the comments. I can help you out with that. And everything else will be linked below. So thanks for watching. Hope this helped.